Bless the Lord. Hello, wherever you are joining us in worship today, I greet you in the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus. The church may be on lockdown, but worship is still going up to the Lord. And we just want you to join with us in worship today as we give God all the glory and all the praise. The song, Lord, I worship and adore you. I bow down before you. Why? It's my pleasure just to serve you. And it's my pleasure to give you and you only all the praise. Let's worship.
struggles, we just want to tell God, thank you. We are here to praise his name.
the works that your hands have made. Moon and the stars you have set your place. Who are we that you should bring of us? Crowned with your glory, you care for us. Oh, Lord.
Aleluya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How excellent you are, oh God. And God, as your ministering servant is about to take the stand to deliver the word that you have placed in his heart. Hallelujah. God, as we have prepared the place we worship the Lord, as we prepared our hearts now to hear from you, I pray another time you will touch your man's servant from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, that he will be empowered by you right now to deliver your word to your people in such a time as this. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we wait upon you now as we wait to hear from you for your man servant. Use him to your glory and to your will. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God we serve. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we can be in your presence this afternoon. Hallelujah. Blessed Savior. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel the presence of God in this place. Hallelujah. It's always a reminder to me that this place doesn't have to be full of people for the presence of God to be in it. Hallelujah. I just need your presence, Lord. More than anything, I need the presence of God. I just want to thank Brother Anthony and the worship team, the musicians for leading out so wonderfully this afternoon. Truly, the presence of God has walked in this house this afternoon. And we are forever grateful. Hallelujah. In this time and season in which we live, we need the presence of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just want to welcome the members and friends of the Willow Tabernacle Church this afternoon. Hallelujah. For those watching on YouTube who are maybe not a member or a friend of this church, welcome to our Sunday service. Today, as you, as you watch, it is January the 17th. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 17th of January. We're, 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 we're moving on. Time is moving quickly. It was just the other day that the new year broke. And here we are, almost three weeks into a brand new year. Hallelujah. And still things aren't looking wonderful. The world is still in turmoil. There is much going on around us. But I've just come to let everybody know today that we need to put all of our trust in Almighty God. Hallelujah. If you've never felt that you needed to trust God before, trust me when I say that you need to trust God now. Oh, glory to God. Will you turn your books, tell your Bibles with me to the book of Proverbs, the wise sayings of Solomon, Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. And the word of the Lord reads thus. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Glory to God. The word that has been laid on my heart to leave with you this afternoon is entitled simply Trusting God. Hallelujah. Trusting 
God. The recent, recent announcement from Prime Minister Boris Johnson that the country will be plunged into a third national lockdown has come as no surprise to any of us. We could all see that with the, the rise in the, in, the, in the cases of COVID-19 that a third lockdown was almost inevitable. Praise God. The past 10 months has seen all of us have to live our lives in anticipation of changing government actions. One minute it's this, next minute it's that. Constant changes as the government are constantly trying to combat this COVID-19 virus that has thrown most of the world into chaos. We are now being told that a new variant of the disease, which is said to be 70% more transmissible, is now on the rampage. And that hospitals and our NHS are now bursting at the seams as the influx of new patients threaten to overwhelm the nation. We've heard it. We've seen it. Exactly what we are told is going on. Every day we are bombarded by the new figures of infection rates and the death tolls just keep seemingly rising. And if we're not careful, it could cause our fear levels to go right through the roof. Hallelujah. The uncertainty then over what tomorrow will bring is causing many of us to become fearful and many of us to become very, very anxious. And the question we are asking today is can we put our trust in Boris? Mm, I'll leave you to ponder that one. Can we trust in what we read and what we hear in the media? Can we put our trust in these things? But I've come to let you know that in the midst of it all, God is calling his children to a place where no matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what we may feel, that we are being called to put our total and unequivocal trust in God. Hallelujah. The same God who instructed us to trust him when the virus first broke out in 2020. He is commanding us to continue to trust him we are living in a time where we are on the verge of a gigantic storm. If you haven't recognized it, you need to understand that we are on the verge of a gigantic storm. Where only our trust in the almighty God is going to get us through. We as believers, we always encourage each other when we're going through our personal struggles. Just put your trust in God. It is so easy when it falls off our lips to tell somebody else to put your trust in in God. It's the easiest thing for us to say to one another. But when the rubber meets the road, how many of us are really and truly trusting God according to the fullest meaning of the word? Oh, bless the name of Jesus. So in order then for us to understand whether we are meeting the biblical mandate of the word trust, we must look deep into the word in its original contextual meaning to decipher whether we are meeting the godly requirements of this word called trust. The first time that we are introduced to the word trust is in the Old Testament, which we all commonly, commonly know was originally written in the Hebrew language. The Genesius Hebrew lexicon defines the word trust, the word bitach, which means trust, as to set one's hope and confidence upon. It also means to be secure and fearing nothing. Let me say that again. The Hebrew, le Hebrew, Hebrew lexicon defines the word bitach, which means trust as to set one's hope and confidence upon. It also means to be secure, fearing nothing. Do you hear that today, Will and Hall Tabernacle? Fearing nothing. And it is at times translated as security and hope. 
The English dictionary, conversely, defines trust as to have a firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something. This definition is very similar to the biblical definition. But what man sees as trust is in reality very different from what God means. Man's version of trust then is so easily broken. It's fragile. As we can all testify to having placed our trust in someone or something only to have our expectations shattered. The reality is that from a humanistic perspective, to completely be able to put total trust in someone or something is very, very rare. Hallelujah. How many times have you put your trust in family? Huh. Huh. I can hear some huhs from the worship team in the house, and I can hear some huhs from those who are at home. How many times have you put your trust in family? How many times have you put your trust in friends? Huh? How many times have you put your trust in relationships? Huh? How many times have you put your trust in work colleagues, church members? Huh? 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 <laughs> How many times have you put your trust in financial institution, institutions? How many times have you put your trust in the police? How many times have you put your trust in doctors and the medical profession? How many times have you put your trust in governments? How many times have we put our trust in business associates only to be let down at some point? Hallelujah. When God, however, speaks of trust, we understand immediately that God is immutable. He is unchangeable. And that we can trust him implicitly. God is not a man that he should lie. Glory to God. And what he says is always what he means. And he always means what he says. This is the very nature of who God is. So if he says that he is trustworthy, you better believe today that our God is trustworthy. Hallelujah. So from the outset then, from a biblical perspective, we see that the origin of the word denotes that when God asks us to put our trust in him, he provides us with some basic ingredients that makes us understand that we can put all our hope, all our confidence, glory to God in him, knowing that we have a security in him where we can be fearless no matter what comes our way. Hallelujah. The original Hebrew then is just like Greek. God made no mistake when he used these two languages for the Bible to be written in. The original Hebrew, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. And both languages are made up of what are called pictographs. Praise God. In the Greek, it differs slightly from the Hebrew. In that in the Greek, a, a Greek paints pictures in, in words and in paragraphs. But Hebrew goes even deeper. Glory to God. In that every single letter of the Hebrew language helps to form a solid illustrative concept that can aid our understanding of what is being said. Every letter in the Hebrew alphabet is able to form a picture that helps us to build up an image in our minds as to what the writer is trying to convey. So when we start to break down this word betach, which means trust, when we break it down further, we can analyze the letters to get an even greater understanding of its meaning. The more we understand, 
the more we are able to trust in the God of our salvation. Are you with me today, church? Hallelujah. The three letters from the Hebrew alphabet that are used in the word betach are bet, tet, and chet. <laughs> Almost sounds comical, but I'm going somewhere with this. And the Hebrew alphabet is not like the English alphabet where singular letters are used like A, B, C, and D. But each letter is made up of a symbol and a word. It's a bit like the Greek alphabet which starts with alpha, beta, alpha, beta, and finishing with the word omega. And that's where we get our alpha and omega from, the Greek alphabet. He is the first letter and he is the last. The Hebrew alphabet then is Aleph, Bet, Jimel, and then it finishes 22 letters later with the word Tor. So the first letter we look at that makes up and explains the word trust is Bet. Remember these, these letters paint a picture that help us to understand the word better. The picture that we see from the word bet, what is painted here is that of a tent or a home or a family. It speaks of being on the inside of something and resting. It speaks of when the word trust is, it speaks of when the word trust is used in scripture, the term in frequently follows. Wherever we see, a lot, a lot of the time when we see trust, we see the word in following straight after. Psalm 33 verse 21 says, We have trusted in his holy name. Psalm 28 verse 7 says, The Lord is my strength, my shield in him. My heart trusts. Psalms 9 verse 10 says, And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. The word bet then speaks of being included in God's family. As this is a source of security, a source of trust, and a source of rest. Being a part of or in God's family guarantees you his security. You cannot be on the outside and expect to be able to trust God and inherit the benefits. Are you hearing me today, somebody? It speaks of being inside of God's covenantal relationship and lets us know in the New Testament that when we are in Christ, we can rest assured that we are trusting in a Father who knows how to look after His family. You are in God's family. And when you're in and a part of God's family, you know that you can put your trust in him. The greatest role of any father is to be able to look after his family. His wife and his children should know and feel secure in this knowledge that their father loves them so much and cares for them so much because you are in his family. And therefore, you are under his protection. Glory to God. I was watching a clip on YouTube just the other day where I saw a father walking down the road with his child. She looked about maybe the age of about six. He was walking hand in hand down the road, just minding his own business. And all of a sudden, a big dog came out from somewhere. Massive dog came out. And as we would expect, a, a loving father who is there to protect his child, a child who would have put their trust in her father. You would have expected a man to back up, to put the child behind him, and to shield her from the threat that was coming. But no. Guess what this father did? The man loosed the child's hand. The child ran off. The dog ran after her. And you know what the man did? The man jumped up on the roof of a car. And left this child to the mercies of this dog. Thank God the dog just wanted to play. Didn't bite the child. But the father 
had abstained from his, his duty and his responsibility to protect his child. And I'm wondering how, when that child grows up, will she ever really be able to trust in a father who abandoned her? Will she able, be able to put her trust in a man who seemed untrustworthy at that time when he needed, when she needed him most? Glory to God. But this is not our God who is the converse and the total opposite of that situation. Our God protects us at all times. And we can say that our trust is always in Him. Because when a threat comes, we trust in God. When COVID comes, we can trust in God. When difficult circumstances come, we trust in God. Because He cares for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The second letter in the Hebrew alphabet of the Hebrew word for trust is tet. This is a picture of something wrapped tightly and covered. The wrapping concept can be related to a newborn baby being swaddled where it feels love and contentment. Are you hearing me today, somebody? You know when a, a newborn baby, there's a, there's a particular wrapping, if you like, for newborn babies. That, and then they will tell you it's, it's a procedure that always seems to work when the child is unsettled. They tell you to take the child and to wrap the child tightly in swaddling blankets. Praise God. And when you ever, when any child that is unsettled, when you do that to a child, there's just something about that procedure that seems to wrap that, when that child is wrapped up, that child just feels comfortable. It feels warmth. It feels secure. And it feels content. Are you hearing me today, somebody? Hallelujah. The letter Tet is also the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet for good. Psalms 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Trust then has to do with distinguishing that God is good. To be wrapped and swaddled in the goodness of his everlasting arms. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 27 says, The eternal God is your refuge, your place of trust. And underneath are the everlasting arms. As I said earlier, if you ever want to see a baby content, then wrap them securely in a blanket, a technique that is widely used. Hold that baby in your arms and that child will feel secure and content. This is a picture of you and I wrapped up in God, wrapped up in his everlasting arms. And he holds us and protects us to a place where we feel contented in him. And that baby, I guarantee you, feels the love and the trust of their parents when they're being held in their everlasting arms. Hallelujah. And so the believer who puts their trust in God needs to understand that picture today, that that is us being carried and swaddled in the arms of Jesus. This is why we must never fear why we must never panic. When we trust in God, he holds us as that baby being swaddled in his loving tender arms where we feel total protection and safety. Hallelujah. The third and final letter of the Hebrew word for trust is checked. This word pictures a fence or a wall. It speaks of protection. This picture differs, differs slightly from Bet. In that it speaks more of boundaries. Amen. Our part in terms of trusting God is that we are to stay within the confines of the boundaries that God has set. We cannot fully put our trust in God if we move outside of the parameters that he has set for us. God has parameter walls. 
And once we stay in those parameter walls, we are right in the place where we can say, yes, I have put my trust in God. But the day we step outside of that parameter and do our own thing, walk our own way, behave as we want, act as we want, live a riot, riotous life as we want, we are stepping outside of the protection of God. Hallelujah. 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 So we cannot trust God. Trust that God will protect us if we, be go, if we go beyond the barriers and to do our own thing. There are countless occasions in the Old Testament where God's children have stepped outside of his will and therefore forfeited his protection. Glory to God. So all three of these Hebrew letters, glory to God, they come together with their own picture. Hallelujah. And it gives us a deeper and a greater understanding of what it means to trust God. So when we combine the th three letter pictographs we use to form the Hebrew word for trust into a unified concept, we see that trusting God is to abide and to rest in him by discerning his goodness and his greatness and being protected, embraced and surrounded by his love, compassion and his favor. When we have a full understanding of the word trust, we can view the times in which we live with confidence, knowing that God will never let us down. You may be fearful today about COVID. You may be fearful of that sickness that you're going through. You may be fearful of the financial issues that are causing you distress. You may be fearful of a loss of job. You may be fearful of family issues. You may be fearful of marital problems, but we can rest assured you can put 100% trust in your God. He has a 100% track record when it comes to trust. God will never let us down. You can trust him implicitly. Are you hearing me today, somebody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The scripture in Proverbs that we read, it tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not to lean on our own understanding, to acknowledge him in all our ways and he will indeed direct our paths. We are being told then through the scripture to trust in the Lord with the core of our very being, with every ounce of our inner man. I don't know where you are today and how much trust you have in God. But I encourage you that whatever is hindering you from putting your full trust in God today, I ask you and implore you today to hand it over to God and trust Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Trust Him totally. Whatever you're carrying, whatever is hindering you, Stopping you from putting your full trust in God, I implore you today to take that weight. Wherever you are at home, listening to this sermon, I just want you to take that weight that you've been carrying off your shoulders. Hallelujah. Because you're going to do a, a, a spiritual transaction today. You're going to take that weight off your shoulders and you're going to lay it at the feet of Jesus. And he's going to in turn give you his peace. To know that you can trust him when you give him your circumstance today. So many of us, we have situations that we are going through. That we say we trust in God and we give him the circumstance. But before long, when we feel like God hasn't come through for us, when we can't feel his trust, we pick that thing back up again and place it right back on our shoulders. I'm imploring you today to let it go. And to put your total trust in Jesus. We're also told not to lean on our own understanding. Trusting in God is like having a large dependable tree to lean on for support in times of weakness. Hallelujah. But when we don't trust in God, we will lean on our own understanding. Which is at best shaky 
and at its worst, totally unreliable. You cannot trust your own understanding. Are you hearing me today, somebody? When you're trying to make sense of what is going on in your life and in the world around you, it's futile trying to lean upon what you think. You need to give that thing over to God who knows how to deal with it. You need to rest securely in his arms, trusting in him. The scripture says, goes on to say that we ought to acknowledge him in all our ways. It means that you need to, to acknowledge means to agree with what is being said. It also means that you recognize the presence or the existence of something or someone. It also means you make mention of achievement. So everything you do, you must come into agreement with God about what he says concerning trust. We must also recognize him for all that he has done for us as we trust him. Also, we need to verbalize and let the world know that our trust is in almighty God. No matter what the politician says, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what anybody says, we need to let them know that you do your thing. You trust in whatever you want to trust in. The arms of flesh will always fail. But I put my trust in the almighty God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we have done all of this, he then promises that he will direct our path. He will literally lead us and guide us no matter what is happening around us. So when we finally understand what it means to trust God, we can never be worried and we can never be afraid. You may be at home today worrying about how you will cope with tomorrow. What next with this sickness? How am I going to pay this bill? But I want to encourage you today to put your betach or to put your trust in God as only he can guarantee that once you do, all will be well. Somebody learn to put your trust in God today. As I said earlier, we are living in a time and in a season where if you say that you put your trust in God, you better mean it. Because there are so many things that are coming against us. Hallelujah. So many things that are coming against us individually and collectively as the church of God. But we need to know and we need to understand that we are trusting or we are in the betach of God. Hallelujah. Where we are in him, we are swaddled and protected by him and we are enclosed and fenced in from all that the world will throw at us. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, we thank you for your word. Your word that encourages us to detach, to put all our trust in you. You are a God who has proved yourself time and time again as trustworthy. Lord, you have never lost a battle yet. You have never let us down, almighty God. And so we know, Heavenly Father, that when we put our trust in you, your track record proves, Lord, that you will always come through for your children. Why? Because we are in your family. We are wrapped up in you, Heavenly Father. And we are hedged in from the forces of darkness. And so, Father God, as we continue to ask you to navigate us through the year 2021, it has started out with great uncertainty. Just like 2020 closed with uncertainty, 21 has started with uncertainty. But Father God, we know that as we look to the hills, from when cometh our help, our help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And so Father God, we put all our trust in you today as you lead us through this minefield called life. 
Lord, the bombs are going off here. They're going off there. They're going off everywhere. But you, God, hallelujah, be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Illuminate our way, Lord God, as we walk through life's minefield. Missing, Lord God, those things that would cause us harm. Almighty God, help us this day to put all our trust in you. Father, we need you today. Hallelujah, we need you today. As the deer pants after the water broke, oh God, so my soul pants after thee. I need you today, Lord, as the flowers need the rain. Lord God, I need you today. We need you. The church here of Will and All Tabernacle needs you. The body of Christ, the ecclesia, we need you. We solicit you. We call upon your name today, oh God. Hear us, Lord, in our lowly estate. Meet our every need. Father, I place the church at Will and All Tabernacle before you. Every member of the church, Lord God, I place them into your mighty hand. I pray, God, that we will learn to put our trust in you. Whatever you are going through, just lift your hands at home and give God praise. Because you're coming to let him know today that you are putting your trust in him. That whatever is plaguing you today, you've come to put it down. And to put your trust in God. Hallelujah. And we, are, we know, Lord. That you are more than able. You are a more than able God. And you are able, Lord God, to meet our every need. Father, we give you the glory today. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we honor you. We glorify you. And we praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And everybody said... Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for the offering, Lord God, that will be collected online even this week. We pray, God, that you will bless it, sanctify it, that you will use it for the building of your kingdom. Mighty God, that we will have resources, Heavenly Father, to carry out, Lord God, the great commission in this area of the vineyard here in Willenhall. Father, we pray for every giver. We pray, oh God, that you will bless them to maximum capacity, that you will continue to open up those wonderful windows of heaven, pouring out blessings, Lord God, upon each and every giver. We thank you, Lord, that your word is true. Every word of our God is yea and amen. And so, Lord God, we stand assured that when we give into your kingdom, heavenly Father, you shall return it to us, pressed down, shaken together. So you shall return it to our bosom. And Father, we are grateful to know that we serve a God, hallelujah, who is faithful to his word. And so, Father God, as the offering comes in, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus' blessed name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody at home, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can I just give a few notices before we leave? Hallelujah. Here on the 17th of January, the year 2021. We'll be continuing our 21-day fast until the 21st of January, you only have four days left. Glory to God. You've done well so far. Just four days to go, Brother Anthony. Glory to God. And then we can start to uh -huh, get into them things that we've been <laughs> missing for so long. Glory to God. The food bank will be open on Tuesday as usual from 12 till 2 p.m. Prayer meeting will be on Zoom on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. I just want to thank the church for our financial support during the closure. Please continue to use the bank details that you will be seeing on screen throughout this service to make future payments. And just a quick reminder to all members that the 
the regarding the building fund contributions which are now due please if you could bring those in we will be very very grateful so god bless you and thank you so much for tuning in today and may the lord continue to bless you as you continue to put your unequivocal trust in him god bless you enjoy the rest of your day praise the lord